You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. The Unthinkable. We are scientists, engineers, statisticians, explorers, dreamers. A crew that became a family, and, as of this moment, victims of a totally unwarranted wormhole aggression. The wormhole opens before us, around us, within us, without warning. One minute, standard research vessel existence. The next, a kaleidoscopic death tunnel of prismatic energy and destruction with an infinite expanse of darkness, light, euphoria, and pain condensed into an instant, giving way to deafening stillness. Dim and emergency lighting flickers to life amid the groaning bulkheads and sweating metal. Most of the crew, including the captain, are dead. Critical systems are critically damaged. Scans show us to be in uncharted space with no points of reference on any horizon. We were tasked with studying the fringes of the universe. Those fringes just got fringier. So, in a way, we're super overachieving. Together, only with science and faith in each other, we must survive whatever we discover out there. We are lost, utterly beyond help. But whether beyond hope is up to us. Welcome to Tabletop Arcanum. This is Justin, and I'm bringing you a review of Unsettled by Orange Nebula. This is a two to four player game, plays 15 to 30 minutes per player, and has an MSRP of $90. Now, this was on Kickstarter and wildly successful there, so much so that there's extra planets already, and they are already planning a second Kickstarter. To launch new content as well as be able to get people the original content all over again. There is a lot in this game, but basically you're looking at a cooperative game that really takes a lot of that co-op and table elements where you're looking and trying to figure out with your fellow players what are some of the things you can and can't do because everything's a shared resource and time is not on your side. Let's talk about first impressions. Now this is a game that has a lot of stuff in the box almost to an overproduced level, but high quality game trays, high quality packaging, beautiful art, encompass this entire capsule of goodness. And so much so that the planet boxes, two of them are included in the core framework box. And as you get extras, while they may not fit in the box, you can swap out which ones you take with you to your game night. The game trays and game box have a instructions on the side of how to pack it. It fits beautifully. There's no need for additional organization beyond some total holding pattern for all the planetary boxes, but that's a small issue there. Looking at it, everything is top-notch with the component quality, whether we're talking the game trays, the cards, miniatures, or even the cardboard player dashboards themselves, or the personality traits that you overlay on some of those. All in all, first impressions, this game is layered and dripping and oversaturated with theme and fun. Let's talk about what Unsettled does well. First thing I need to call out on Unsettled is, while it is a game about survival, and while it could have been this grim, dark, nasty thing, and believe me, you will get into some of those weird planets that are a little kooky, a little weird, a little gross, and a little unsettling, you do also have a rule book and game that is full of puns. You have a game that is full of cheeky little references to pop culture, cheeky little nuances and things some of the aspects of the rule book are just trying to tell you its philosophy one of the things i appreciated most about the rule book in general was after your introductory flash page that i read at the beginning of this episode it goes into the philosophy and design approach behind unsettled so you can get where the designers were coming from with this game and how it works on top of that the rules are really well laid out. There is a lot of heavy decision points that you have to go through, so teaching the game is a little rough around the edges. But once you see things in action, a lot of it starts to click because a lot of the actions are very similar to each other in the sense of once you've seen it once, start seeing where the icons and things match up across the game and the language of the game evolves for you. Only about half the rulebook is truly used to set up and teach you. There is a back half, which has all those nitty-gritty detail, rule reference sort of things. And even in the book, they talk about how you don't want to read this. There are two universal rules, creativity prevails and momentum. 
So if it is a creative thing, the game is hardly hard enough. So they're saying if it sounds awesome, you don't spoil a good time. Then the momentum rule is something that a lot of RPG games have in it is don't worry about finding the intricate detail, nitty gritty, granular sort of edge case as a group, figure out what works best and keep the game flowing. You don't want your game crawling to a halt just because of a rules dispute. I do appreciate that they include a lot of the other edge cases in there. So if you are the type of group that does need to get into that and will not have fun because they don't have the, that right answer, it's there for you for the most part. Another piece that Unsettled does wonderfully well is the use of time and action management. So you have a, bun a handful of reactions that you can take per turn, you know, a basic move, moving Luna, your robot companion around, doing things with that. But then you have three focus cubes that allow you to take specifically driven actions, one of which always needs to be rest to adjust the action resources you have on the focus cubes. So really, you get two actions a turn plus some basic every turn actions. It always feels like there's never enough time to do what you want to do every turn because you're always fighting the scenario, you're always fighting time, because the longer the game goes on, the more tired and exhausted the crew members get, and eventually you'll pass out. Unsettled is a framework-based game, so as a core box, it has your base rules and your base mechanics, and each planet adds another layer to those in its own thematic way. So whether you're exploring the dead head of a celestial creature, walking through its membranes and fighting creatures in there, or you're on a fungal planet, those allow to change the rules or add additional rules to your gameplay. And the core box is just that. It is a core rule set that allows that functionality and flexibility within the game systems. Another fantastic thing that Origin Ambula has crafted, they have a wonderful team that is highly engaged with the community, so much so that even during the Kickstarter campaign, the Scarab, your ship that you land on these planets on, was named by the community. One of the six planets that came from the Kickstarter was 100% community voted upon and generated, and is this weird fungal planet that, well, it's rough. The last thing I want to say that I love about Unsettled is culminating in the fact that it is a hard cooperative game. There are multiple scenarios in each planet and you have a lot of replayability there, but it is hard. And in such a way where I don't feel like I'm being necessarily punished throughout the game because of the theme, because of everything that is going weird or kooky, or maybe it's just the name of the current objective is this pun that got the table laughing before we realized how much terrifying, terrifying information that is going to do to us. So the entire game has these serious overtones with a light-hearted, tongue-in-cheek, super sarcastic approach throughout the writing, and it blends into this very beautiful trying to have fun with a game that you are really just a team of Mark Watneys just trying to survive and get food for the next day. Let's talk a little bit about a couple of the opportunities that Unsettled had for us. There is a lot of overhead on the rules to start with, and when that can be intimidating for players. It takes a little bit of while to get the, the ground rules going, but once you do, the game can run very smoothly. Components and things are very isolated, so in a planet box, everything for that planet comes out of there, and there's not really cross-pollination between the planets, which is both a good and bad thing. Great because then nothing's independent of each other, but bad because if there's a mechanic that you like in one, it doesn't really carry over into any of the others. Likewise, the, because it is a framework and because we only have the first six plans and they do plan on releasing more, some of the rules, for example, exhaustion and being able to carry a passed out uh, fellow explorer doesn't seem to come up in some of these core box rules because that rule hasn't really been leveraged yet in some of the game design. So it's a little jarring to have these mechanics that you know about but then never really see them in action. Now there are some typos and some errors in the first edition if you do get it that are a little misleading or a little confusing. Definitely make sure you leverage uh, sources like the Unsettled Board Game Group or Board Game Geek to find some of those. It's unfortunate that the game as, as pro well produced as it is in component quality and art has some of that but I would not say that is something that that unwarrantly said hey that's something that 
truly takes away from the experience. It just may cause some confusion, which might bring you back to that back of the book. And again, that back of the book says what makes most sense, what makes most fun, and just go with it. And I definitely encourage you to go with that. So, so my final thoughts with Unsettled is this beautiful, well-crafted story survival game in space that really just tries to capture the heart and soul of the Martian and to a kind of lost in space group game. Keeps it light, keeps it fun, has some heavy tones and some weird stuff that go, happens along the ways. Each planet is super unique in the sense of I don't feel like any of them are using mechanics that the others are using or in that sense one is better than the others in that in a different sense because they're all very unique from each other and what you're how you're interacting with those environments i'm excited to see what comes next for the unsettled universe and in that vein does cap at four players which is a bit unfortunate but the game does take quite a bit of time when you have more deliberation at the table so i could see with higher player counts that may not have been as, as ideal likewise you get a lot of replayability based out of three different scenarios in each planet depending if you even beat the scenarios in each planet but also there are personality traits that are randomly dealt and selected by the players so there's always a variation within the game in that sense as well likewise event cards and things like that mix it up so so there is a lot of game in unsettled and for the 90 dollar msrp you get quite a bit out of the box and the 15 dollar msrp of the planetary boxes each one adds just a little bit extra layer to your game from there if you're a group that likes co-op games likes having fun doesn't mind some puns in your game unsettled is something i would definitely recommend checking out if you are a group that is not keen on framework rules and having a high level of, you know, do what's best by the group and don't have a rule book that really dives truly into those nitty gritty details and has an answer for every edge case. Unsettled may be a little too loose for you in that sense. Likewise, if you do have a player in your player group that is a little bit more uh, controlling or quarterbacking in most co-op games, this may be a challenging game for them to engage with. The group does really have a lot of effective use However, I will say in the positive caveat of that, there is a lot of choices in this game and it's very hard to identify what are some of the better choices. I hope you've enjoyed Tabletop Arcanum's review of Unsettled by Orange Nebula. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Tabletop Arcanum on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Hit those notifications to make sure you know when new content comes out. Also, make sure to drop us a comment and let us know how we're doing and any questions you may have love to hear from you. As always, happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, produced by Justin Taylor. This episode is hosted by Justin Taylor. Mixing and editing by Richard Geese. Original theme by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. Check the description for this episode's featured background music. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and leave us a review if you would. As always, thanks for listening. Thank you.